What is going on guys? Welcome back. This video today is going to be a Python project for complete beginners. We're going to implement a simple rock, paper, scissors game for the command line in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so this is going to be an extremely beginner friendly video today. We're going to build a simple rock, paper, scissors game for the command line in Python. And the reason this is so beginner friendly is because we're going to use a lot of concept that new programmers learn. So loops and if statements and lists and dictionaries and user input and so on. And we're also going to use the random package from Python. And it's not very complex. It's not uh, in any way complicated to understand what's happening here. But for beginners, this is a good first project to put to use all the concept that you've already learned. So we're going to get right into it. I'm going to open up a new Python file here. I'm going to call it main py. And we're going to first of all import random. Because of course, the idea is that we're going to play rock, paper, scissors against the CPU against the computer, and the computer will just pick something at random. So there's no psychology involved here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to define a couple of variables. First of all, we want to have a done variable, which we're going to set to false because we want to keep playing unless we quit actively. And then we also want to keep track of how many time we won, lost or had a tie. So wins, losses, ties is going to be equal to zero, 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 all of them initialized at zero. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to map certain inputs so the user can input RP or S for rock, paper, scissors but uh, those are going to be translated to the actual words. So just so we have an easier time to put out everything. I'm going to say R is mapped to rock, P is mapped to paper and S is mapped to scissors. Come on. There you go. So this is now a dictionary mapping the keys that we're going to pass here as user input to the actual words. And we're going to see why we need that later on. What we want to do next is we want to have a game loop. So we want to say while not done, keep playing. And the idea is that we're going to get the user choice So choice is equal to input. And we're going to ask the user to input, uh, please provide your next or let's say please choose your next move and the move can be rock, paper, scissors, and then we can maybe also say Q to quit. And what we do then is we take this choice. And based on that choice, we decide what is going to happen next. But before we do that, we also need to have a choice of the CPU. So we're going to say CPU choice is equal to random dot choice from the following collection R P S. So the computer can choose rock, paper, scissors as well. And then what we do is we go through the different scenarios. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do it one way. And then we're going to optimize the code just so we have a little bit of refactoring as well. So I'm going to do it the uh, let's say the verbose way. And then we're going to do a more efficient way. At least uh, we're going to shorten the code. So we're going to say here, first of all, if the choice is equal to the CPU choice, then it's a tie. If we have the same thing, it's a tie. So what we do here now is we say, uh, it's maybe we should use double quotations here. It's a tie. You both chose and then we can use here in an F string, uh, just a choice. However, this is why we need now this names uh, dictionary up here. Choice itself is just R P or S. And what we need here is we need to say, that the choice actually want to have names choice. So we want to get the name of the respective choice. So it says you both chose rock and not you both chose R. Alright, so that's the case of a tie. Otherwise, we can have the the, um, the scenario that I chose, or that the user chose rock, and then we need to check, okay, if the user chooses rock, uh, what happens when the CPU chooses uh, paper or scissors, because if the CPU chooses rock, we're already in a tie here. Uh, but we have these different use cases. So we have choice equals R choice equals paper and choice equals scissors. And the logic is now the following something 
uh, beats are. So there is something that beats rock and this something is paper. So what we do here now is we say, if CPU choice is equal to P, then we have to print CPU wins you chose and then again, we use an F string here, you chose names, choice, the CPU chose names, CPU choice. And then basically, we can say else. So if the CPU didn't choose the same thing, it didn't choose paper, we only have scissors. So in this case, we're going to copy this and we're going to say CPU uh, or actually you win, you chose this and CPU chose that. And then we can basically copy that. And all we have to do now is we have to replace uh, the respective character here. So in paper, if the CPU chooses scissors, you lose and then we can copy this again, scissors, if the CPU chooses rock, you lose. And then we have the default case, which is of course, uh, or actually, first of all, we have the Q case. So if the choice is equal to Q, then we're going to just set done equal to true so that the loop terminates. And of course, in all these cases, we need to also specify or we need to also increase the counters here. So if it's a tie, what we do is we say ties plus equals one. If it's a win, we need to say wins plus equals one, and we can copy this now so I can have it actually here, it's a loss. So we can have it here, here, and here. And here we need to now say losses plus equal one. There you go. All right, so that is that. And then we also have just this else branch here invalid command. And finally, after this loop, um, or actually not after this loop, but at the end of the loop, we need to say current stats. And then I can say wins. Or let's do it that way wins, wins, losses, losses, ties, ties like this. All right, so this should already work. Let's give it a try. I can play a game now. Let's say I go with paper you win, you chose paper The CPU chose rock, let's go with paper again. It's a tie, you both chose paper. Uh, CPU wins, chooses scissors, you win, you win, and so on. Okay, so let's go with scissors. Let's go with uh, rock. And let's go with Q. There you go. So that works. Now, this is actually the full game. However, we can optimize this and I deliberately coded it like this because it's quite repetitive, we can actually optimize this and there are different ways in which you can optimize that. I'm not going to provide you the most optimal uh, rock paper scissors game here, but I'm going to make a couple of changes that can make the code uh, a little bit smaller, or a little bit more uh, professional, if you want to call it that. So one thing that we can do here is we can uh, create a, another dictionary loses, which is not the same as losses, loses. Uh, and here we can define which, um, which uh, choice beats which other choice. So we can say rock loses against scissors, uh, against paper, sorry, rock loses against paper, paper loses against scissors, and scissors loses against rock. And by doing that, I can do now the following thing. So first of all, if it's a tie, it's a tie, I don't have to change that. That's quite simple. But here now what I can do is I can just say for these branches here, elif choice in, and then I can just provide the list here, R P S. So if the choice the user made is any of these three R P or S, I can just say if the CPU choice is equal to, uh, and now I just have to pick the one that wins against the choice. So I just have to say loses. And then choice. If that's the case. Um, so if CPU choice equals loses choice, then we're going to print CPU wins. And then same message here again. You chose names, choice, 
and then uh, the CPU shows names. Oh, I didn't close this. The CPU shows names. CPU choice like this. Um, and now we can say otherwise, just copy this and say, you win, and so on. And then we just have to say losses plus equals one here and wins plus equals one here. And the rest stays the same. Now, one other thing that we could optimize or we could make better is we could just turn the choice whatever it is to uppercase so that I can also input lowercase r p and s so I can just say upper here at the end. Uh, and now basically the game is still the same but I can also use lowercase letters like r for example. I can also use uppercase I can use p p like this. And I can also uh, just input something else, and it will tell me invalid command, but I can keep playing and I can then use Q, uh, or actually also lowercase Q to quit the whole loop. So yeah, this is how you build a simple rock, paper, scissors game in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.